far lost, fog of war. Four. Peter Rick sat in a plastic chair in the wide rock-hewn antechamber outside the council room. Just an hour ago he'd been in there, finally getting Dutton's contract for dock services signed. Now three strangers were in there, three pirates, alone with his mayor, who had locked the door from the inside. Heavy footsteps echoed somewhere close by. Chief Train walked back into the room, now flanked by two heavily armored police officers. Been close to an hour. What have we heard? Train asked. Peter shook his head. Nothing. Train blew past him and hammered on the door. Hara, it's Eric. I'd love a little proof of life out here. He hammered again. Otherwise I'm wiring blasting putty to this door. A few moments later, Peter heard the heavy clunk of the lock sliding free. Train jumped back and aimed his service pistol. The other officers had moved to the sides of the room and raised what, to Peter's mind, were comically huge rifles at the doorway. He didn't know whether to run or to hide. He settled for crouching behind a table back near the wall. He wanted to run, but he couldn't. Not when Hara Otana had walked herself in a room with killers. He'd known her all his adult life. Her son Philip was his best friend, and he'd voted for her. There was that, too. Just as Peter realized he was panicking pretty hard, the door opened, and Mrs. Mayer walked out. The three pirates walked out close behind. He heard the chief whisper, Take them. Dots of laser light appeared on the Skanen and the younger human when Hara stepped in between the weapons and the men. Put the guns away, Hara ordered. These men aren't pirates. Not today. Train formed his hand into some kind of signal to his officers. The targeting lights on the younger human and the Skanen winked off. Train's pistol-mounted beam still shone brightly on the older human's forehead. You're being awful charitable, Hara. I know Jason and the kids are shipped out. Does this have anything to do? My husband's name is Jake, she corrected Train, and there's no need for codes. I'm not under duress. My family aren't hostages. Okay, Train growled, splitting his glare between his mayor and the pirates. So introduce us. The bald-headed pirate in a ship suit tugged up his right sleeve and showed off the back of his wrist. There was a black circle on his hand. Peter could make out squiggles inside it, and a familiar double chevron. Sergeant Blocker. The Skanen lifted his middle arms, the set Peter always admired for the fine detailed work their pincers and claws could do. His armored chitin moved with emotion, and revealed a similar tattoo on the soft skin of its right shoulder. Corporal Bruin, his deep voice boomed. The older human had carefully unbuttoned his fine shirt to reveal a similar circle on his collarbone. Nguyen, WDF. He let go of his collar and smiled warmly. No rank. WDF? asked one of the armored cops. Winter Defense Force, Hara murmured, looking at the floor. Bullshit, Chief Train said. Mayor Otana looked at him. No. She turned to the armored officer closest to her. Officer, your med kit, please. WDF? Peter realized he'd walked closer to the strange conversation, drawn in without realizing it. The Winter Defense Force were mythic. The ghost militia that pushed back the guard invasion when all seemed lost. Then they disappeared. For good. Humanity's arrival in Farlost had changed a lot of things. One of the worst was the creation of the System Guard, a military organization that, when first formed by the remnants of the U.S. military, took it upon themselves to defeat the dragons, a brutal reptilian race of slave masters who had oppressed Farlost as far back as anyone could remember. The Guard didn't just liberate Farlost from the brutal dragons. They nearly wiped out their entire species and then went on to civilize a wide swath of the solar system. Skirmish by skirmish, occupation by occupation, the system guard inevitably filled the dragon's power vacuum until they became nearly as feared as the monsters they toppled. 
any sentient species attempting to cheat the laws of the universe and travel faster than light ended up in far lost a solar system so far away from any of the arrivals charts that there was no way home anyone dumb enough to try and cheat the universe again to escape far lost found their molecules disintegrated in a very bright explosion the refugees struggling to survive beneath Farlost's dim red sun had not been kind to each other. Few escaped a life of slavery under the dragon clans. The few that did lived in hiding, in places like the Winter Belt. Arrivals were few and far between. Decades might pass before a wink of light indicated newcomers. When that happened, the people of the Belt would do their best to get to them before the dragons and hide them among its many rocks. Before the guard could build the strength and numbers to openly war with the dragons, the belt harbored them too. Belters built their ships, willingly fueled them, even worked as their eyes and ears to gather intel in places the guard could not go. But once the dragons were gone, the guard's voracious demands for resources, workforces, and living space did not abate. Too late... Belters realized the guard would keep on taking whatever they wanted. They spread out from the belt and strengthened their hold on planets and moons across Far Lost. To fuel the expansion, they enacted new laws, making themselves supreme authority. System guard edicts were posted on every ship, station, and asteroid where the guard had a foothold. Across the belt, Rocks, ships, and stations cancelled service contracts, refused trade. Some successfully persuaded the guard to leave. Others had to fight to get them out. Some fought and lost. Entire populations were forced out at gunpoint if the guard decided their mission to protect far loss gave them a greater claim to societies than generations of sacrifice that had built them. Peter remembered the day the state-run System Guard news feed announced Peach, one of the oldest, wealthiest, and most populous asteroids in the Winter Belt, was claimed by the Guard. Even then, some Belters who hadn't struck deals with the Guard figured they were safe. Who invaded chaotic asteroid belts that have never been fully mapped or tamed? especially when some of the bigger states had wired engines to hundreds of neighboring asteroids to hurl at anyone who got surly in their orbit. The System Guard. That's who. 